Here's a bit of news about a repo man with a bit of a twist. As we all know, the most liked people in the universe, an elderly couple got hit with a bombshell after he repossessed their car. Jim, who is a co-owner of a company in Illinois Recovery, is not averse to causing some tension between him and other people, like most repo men. Indeed, for over 20 years, he's been working as a repo man near St. Louis and has coped with numerous upset customers, as you can imagine. Some of his encounters make for shocking reading. He actually told Miami Herald in 2016 that people had tried to shoot him numerous times, and one time he saw a man shoulder a rifle, which just missed his head by inches. Indeed, Jim tried to put in perspective how close he came to death. He added, I never saw him, but I felt the flash and tasted gunpowder in my mouth. He also told CBS News in 2017 he'd had people try and run him over with their car. Meanwhile, during the rounds, Jim had needed to repossess an old couple's car after they had started having financial difficulties. However, what he did next was unprecedented and was definitely against the repo man code. But, for the couple concerned, they couldn't believe their luck after their misfortune. Down at Pat Kibbing, where one unfortunate couple had fallen into the financial difficulty like most people do when the repo man comes to knock at your door. The couple from Red Bull, Illinois, had been hit hard by their lack of funds and sudden increase in medical bills. Due to Stan, for his part, had enjoyed a career in the Navy and also been a janitor. And the couple had never been, well, never been really wealthy. But money became tight when Stan came down with early stages of Alzheimer's. Many more had to be spent on his medical bills and prescription medicine. But as a result, they fell behind with their payments on their 1998 Buick, for which they paid $95 a month. Although the couple had never been rich, they had always managed to stay on top of their finances and keep a little bit ahead. However, this mounting financial pressure had put them behind the eight ball. And at least they needed was a repo man, really the last thing they needed was a repo man knocking at their door. For Jim, however, he had to do his job and soon enough, Stan and Pat could see his tow truck parked outside their house. Luckily for the couple, they encountered arguably one of the nicest repo men in Illinois, who preferred the more diplomatic approach when recovering debts. Jim told CBS, I may be getting soft in my old age, but you get more done with kindness. Meanwhile, the couple tried to maintain a positive attitude, but that didn't make the ordeal any less upset. The car was part of the family life and their Pomeranian dog, Baby, loved going for drives. Pat recalled her thought process when Jim repossessed the vehicle, telling CBS, when, when he took the car, I said, God, do whatever, whatever you think is best for us. Pat then suggested that maybe this was all meant to happen. She added, you know, God works in mysterious ways. But the couple had struck a chord with Jim and they remained on his mind for a, for a while after he re- repossessed their vehicle. He felt terrible and had taken the car considering the, the tough times that they'd gone through. The whole ordeal seemed to be unfair to Jim and he resolved to rectify the situation. More specifically, Stan and Pat remind Jim of people close to his own heart, the all-around American grandparents. I saw my grandparents in them, he stated to CBS. He had driven a bit before his conscience forced him to take action and help the elderly couple if he could. Indeed, once he left Stan and Pat's home, Jim stopped his car and called the bank. He added... I made it to the block and then I pulled over. I called the bank and asked them if I could pay off the past due amount, but it was no good. They said no, it couldn't be done. But when Jim got home later that day, the inn stuck with him. I told the Chicago Sun Times, when I got home that night, I said to myself, there are a real nice elderly couple. I've got to do something. I can't just take their car. Indeed, Jim was becoming a repo man like no other. But with the local bank refusing to pay for the car and unable to pay off Stan and Pat's debt himself, Jim
Jim had to flex his creative muscle and think outside the box. So he decided to do what, whatever it took to pay for the couple's car and park it again in their driveway where it belonged and see a smile on their faces. And so Jim set up a GoFundMe page to pay for Pat and Stan's car. The GoFundMe Facebook page shared Jim's venture with a video and a caption outlining his mission. Jim Ford is a repo man. He takes, he takes for a living, but after picking up Pat and Stan's Buick, he decided to give back. Jim utilizes his contacts in the repo industry and gained lots of traction for his page. Everything started moving forward and slightly snowballing. Indeed, on his first night of being active, it raised more, more money than Jim could ever have wished for, raising over $3,500, which covered the cost of the car with plenty left to spare. With the money raised, Jim paid off the fees for the service of the car and had enough to pay pay the $2,500 that they owed the bank. And after all that, there was still plenty of money left over and Jim popped the remaining $1,000 in an envelope. Meanwhile, the final amount raised stood at 10 times the original figure, amounting to an incredible $35,000. Still, Pat and Stan had no idea about a surprise waiting for them, nor did they have a clue about the other extras that Jim had arranged for them. Indeed, he'd gone above and beyond to make up the taking their car away with his exceeding generosity. But Jim's kindness didn't end there. With the help of his friend Tom Williams, they fixed up the headlights on the car, they repaired the radiator, gave it an oil change and basically a good scrub and clean, and left a nice gift on the front seat for Pat and Stan to enjoy. Later that day, they fixed the Buick, and with the frozen turkey, Jim and Tom Booked the car up to their tow truck and arrived at Stan and Pat's house once more. They were greeted by the couple and also by a cheering group of the couple's neighbours, welcoming them. Indeed, it was a momentous moment for Stan and Pat. The latter told the Miami Herald, It was a miracle come true. We didn't know what we were going to do. Stan recalled his joy when he found out they were getting their car back. He told the Miami Herald, I got up this morning, I looked up at the sun and said, I hope we get our car back. It's just unbelievable. They were just overjoyed that they had their Buick back. But that wasn't the only thing Jim had in store for them. When Jim told Pat and Stan he had sorted the outstanding payment on the car, they didn't, couldn't believe it. According to CBS, he broke the news saying, we paid off the whole car. You have no car payments anymore. Pat then gasped replying, oh my god. Jim then handed Pat the envelope with the remaining money. Unable to find words, she gave him the best hug she could ever over her walker. And at the same time, a kindly neighbour got the turkey and placed it on Stan and Pat's porch. It was overwhelming to say the least. In a picturesque scene, Baby sat nestled in Stan's arms and Pat leaned over her walker, flabbergasted by Jim's kindness, the latter. For his part, stood gleaming from the happiness that he had brought to the couple. Meanwhile, the Miami Herald reported Stan's surprise at seeing the vehicle. He said, it looks like it's new. Indeed, Jim's incredible act of kindness had made its mark on Stan and Pat. The latter was later asked by CBS News about how to change her outlook. She replied, there's good people out there. He's our guardian angel. She could see how much effort had he had put into it to make their day really happy because he dropped off the car. She observed that he must have cleaned it up a lot. Pat said that he considered Jim to be one of the most warm-hearted people she had met. She told CBS News, he was wonderful. I mean, he's the kindest man I've ever met in all my life. Even the Indua expressed his surprise saying that it was certainly mysterious that God could be working through a repo man. Closing the story, the reporter for CBS News ended on a touching note. He observed that there's good out there, there's guardian angels, and sometimes we find them in the most unlikely places and professions. Because although kindness is rarely a job, no matter what you do, it's always an option. 
The online community responded well to Jim's kindness too. The GoFundMe Facebook page shared the story and it led to overwhelmingly positive comments. One user wrote, It does not matter what kind of job you do, at least it's nice to know that some people like Jim still have a heart to go out and help others. Others defended the bad reputation for Jim's job as a repo man. One user wrote, He's got a job to do. It's not his fault that someone doesn't pay their car note. He didn't have to do this for the couple. He did it out of the kindness of his heart. Indeed, we can't blame someone for the job that they do. Meanwhile, random acts are everywhere, and if you look hard enough, it could be something small like helping someone carry heavy luggage into a crowded train or onto a crowded platform or into a shopping centre or going much further, like Jim did, transforming someone's life. So take the time to help someone. So when you're out and about and you see someone struggling, do a little bit of human kindness and give them a hand. No matter how big it is or how small and everything that we do is unconditional. It's always nice to help someone. And actually it makes them feel, not only does it make you feel good, but it makes them feel good as well that someone actually cares and knows that they didn't have to. That's like giving up your seat in a bus or a train. You know what I mean. Be nice. Doesn't